So I think most of you are aware that for the past couple of weeks I've been very busy with the Big Shallow. Next to the Big Shallow I've also been working on some other new projects that I haven't shown you guys yet. I'm super excited about. But with all those new projects and the Big Shallow, um, some of my other things got a little bit neglected. So at the time of filming, the Big Shallow has only been planted for, I think, five days. It was last week. So yeah, not really much to update you on besides the Hidrocotyl. This plant is really taking off, growing super fast already. But yeah, because I've been so busy with this tank, some of the other tanks kind of got a little bit neglected. Not so much on the shelf, actually. Just one, the, the one over there. We'll get to that in a minute. So the one that got neglected the most is the 70 liter scapers tank. I haven't done a trimming session on this one. I don't know how long. So today I want to start working on this one and another scape that I'm not very happy with is this one right here. It hasn't really been neglected but um, I'm just not really happy with how it looks right now. So when I scaped this tank I wanted to try something new and use Monte Carlo on top of the wood and basically have it growing as an epiphyte. I saw it somewhere else in some different aquascapes, thought it looked pretty cool so I thought I'd give it a try. And I mean it doesn't look too bad but it, I know it, it just doesn't really feel like it belongs there in my opinion. So this one needs some work done, this one needs some work done, and this one also needs some work done. This is the Blue Velvet New Caradina Shrimp Tank that I set up poof, four, five months ago now. And when I set this up, I was using CO2 injection, but I think now, maybe two months ago, I actually removed the CO2 from this tank. And the hair grass in the back is not very happy with that decision. Actually, for the first month, it was doing quite okay. But now it's starting to turn all brown and just looking very, very sad. So I think we have to, yeah, either replace it with something else or trim it and see if it grows back. But I'm really not happy with how this tank looks right now. So that's the plan for today. Work on these two and a small tank on the shelf. Big maintenance session, maybe a slight rescape as well. And hopefully in like one or two weeks when I'll release this video, we have three beautiful aquascapes again. Let's start with the big one. Because that, uh, that one is the most work. Okay, so where do we start with a big maintenance session like this? I think the first step is to always fresh shot of the CO2. Because, well, when you do maintenance and water changes, you don't need CO2. And otherwise, it's just a waste. Then let's start with removing these um, plants that we don't really need. And then grab our scissors and start trimming the heck out of this tank. And of course, as always, you cannot have enough towels when you're doing this. Because you're always going to be spilling. So when I'm doing a big maintenance session like this one, I always like to make a plan first about trimming. Like what am I trimming first, what am I trimming last? Just to make sure that everything goes smoothly, you know? So for example, now we definitely need to trim the carpet. We also definitely need to trim the stems. But would you start with the carpet or would you start with the stems? I think it's best to start with the stems because then the, the surface basically clears up as well. And we don't have to worry about the carpet trimmings mixing with the stems. So we're going to start with the stems, after that we can do the carpet and then we can see what else needs to be done. That is the majority of the stem plants trimmed. We have them all over there, a huge pile. We're going to cover that with some damp paper towels. Later on we can kind of search through it, see if you want to replant some tops, yes or no. Uh, I think the next step is to actually remove some moss. The moss is literally all over the place. Um, there's some black moss algae in amongst the moss as well. Um, I'm not going to cut it, I'm literally just going to rip it out by hand. Here we go, removed a lot of moss. Uh, next step, we can whip out the lawnmower and start cutting this carpet. But before we do that, I always like to first switch off the filter, otherwise it's just gonna go everywhere. Okay, okay, we're making good progress. Trimming a carpet is easy, you know, it takes only five minutes, but the cleanup after that is the worst. All those floating particles, Luckily, the trusty old EM skimmer is taking care of that. I think the next step for me is to work on the Java fern here, kind of thin it out a little bit, 
I saw some leaves with some black brush algae on them, so I can cut them out. And after that, I think I need to do one more trimming session on the stems, just a light trimming session, just to kind of yeah, make it look more neat and organized. After that, a big water change, and I think we're almost done. Okay, so one thing that definitely needs to be cleaned is the filter inlet and outlet. But if you want to clean these pipes properly, I have to soak them in bleach first, which takes quite a bit of time. And I don't really have that kind of time right now. So what I'm thinking is to just temporarily replace them. So this just came in today. Uh, F Zone wanted to send me some samples of their new lily pipes. So I think I'm just going to take out the outflow and replace it with the plastic one. I'll keep the inflow for now because I quite like that one. Of course, full transparency, this product was sponsored. I did not pay for this. I've been working with Epson kind of on and off. I think they uh, they used to ship to Europe and then they kind of stopped and it was like US only. But I think now they're planning to come back to Europe so they want to send me a few samples. See what I like with these sets is that they give you a spring brush included in the package. That's always nice. So here we have the outflow. Yeah, it's gonna look nice. So the skimmer, let's just take a quick look at it. Yeah, looks nice. Floating portion. Now what I also like that they literally include a ton of suction cups in there. Look at this. Six suction cups. So we have four spare ones. Not bad. Let's get this one up and running and then we can continue with the cleaning session. This one is pretty much done for now. I still want to clean the filter. I haven't done it in a long time and I want to replace some of those stems but I'll probably get to that tonight or maybe tomorrow. Now I just want to move on to the next one. Uh, what do we have to do here? For sure trim the carpet. This is the uh, Liliopsis carpet. I want to keep it a little bit shorter. Right now it's getting quite long. There's a few really long ones as well. I want to basically keep it this short, you know, so give everything nice trim. That will also promote more density. And we also have to trim the stems in the back again. And I want to do something about this Monte Carlo situation. I think I'll keep this portion. Yeah, I think that's good. If we just keep that portion in and then we still have that effect. Because I still think it's, it's a pretty cool effect, you know, like, yeah, it has something. Are we doing this or am I going to regret this? Let's just rip off the band-aid. Let's just do it. Boom. No going back anymore. Yeah, so that might look weird for a few days, but I think it was the right decision to remove it. If we just um, focus more on getting those rotalas more to the left as well, I think that will look much nicer. I think I have some plants to go in that little area, just maybe some Ricardia moss, maybe some small bush of Landra. Okay, so the 70 liter and the 45p are now done. You guys are gonna see them at the end of this video once they've grown in a little bit more. Next up, we need to tackle this one. So the main issue here is the brown hair grass. So we're probably just gonna have to cut that short all the way down to the substrate level. I'm quite surprised that it turned brown actually. I mean, I know that it prefers CO2 as well, but I mean, in the foreground, the carpet plant, that is HC Cuba. That one is also labeled as an advanced plant that needs high light, high CO2. And that one transitioned just fine to the uh, the, yeah, the low-tech environment basically. So I still had these three plants left over from my other uh, projects. So we have some Liliopsis brasiliensis, we have some Helanthium, and we have some Hydrocotyl tripartita. These are relatively easy plants as well. They should do fine in low-tech conditions. So I think we're gonna replace these three plants with the background. Oof, trimmings of hair grass, trimmings of Cuba, <laughs> it's a cleanup nightmare. But we're getting it done. So actually underneath all the brown parts, there was still a lot of healthy green grass. So I don't know, maybe we'll recover, maybe not. But we're gonna continue with the replanting anyway. 
uh, but I don't I do think I'm not going to use the tripartita I think that one will just look out of place also it's the regular version is not the mini so it's a bit too big so we're just going to go in with the halantium and the Leliopsis, and I think I'm going to keep it mostly around the the base of the wood so we can maybe create a little bit of a, a dome shape I guess let's just give it a try The big shallow is making some really weird noise today. Can you guys hear that? It's the water dripping system from the uh, to keep the moss nice and wet. Anyway, it's now been two weeks since we did that maintenance session, so let's see how the tanks are doing. So let's start with the 7 liter scapers tank. I think this one is uh, looking really good. Hope you guys will agree with me. I've also put on the light screen just to give a bit of an extra wow effect. Light screen is basically just a, a small panel that you can put behind the tank. There's some LED lights inside. And it has a small dimmer so you can increase or decrease the brightness yeah it looks pretty cool i have another one on this aquarium as well i think it uh, recovered nicely from the maintenance session carpet is looking good as well this used to be a glossal stigma carpet with a little bit of hair grass and now it's more like a hair grass carpet with a little bit of glossal stigma the fish are a little bit shy though they're very skittish let's give these guys some food maybe they will come out let's go with the fancy glass feeder I haven't given this food in a while and here we just have some small granules basically here we go now we have some action so we have some emmer tetras we have some green neon tetras we have one male of the um uh, pascal rainbow besides that we still have some scarlet bodies this guy is looking a little bit sad i think he's getting old as well there's the female over there and then we have some amano shrimp of course and we have some other sinkless as well and i think that's it for this tank so most of you will know that i just bought 60 of the green neon tetras for the big shallow so i was thinking to catch these guys from here as well i think there's still about 10 15 in here as well and add them to the big shallow but i think first of all i'll never get them out of here because the tank is so densely planted and i think the big shallow is full enough as well so they can just stay in here Moving on to the 45P, this one is still a work in progress. You guys saw me remove that big piece of Monte Carlo from the wood. Then I replaced it with some Ricardia moss, but I did not enjoy how that was looking. So I replaced it with a different moss. This is weeping moss, but that's only been three days since I uh, changed that. So that's still looking a little bit odd. But I think once that moss grows in, we can cut it a little bit into shape as well. Should look much better. Really happy with how this pond is looking. The purple one, that's the Persicaria Sao Paulo. I've also added three more crypts. So we already had three portions of the crypt Legroy over here. One, two, and a third one over there. And I've added three more. So one, two, and another one on the side here. So this one is still a work in progress. Still not really happy with how it looks, but I think it's getting better. We're also still dealing with some algae issues in here. So we have some blue green algae in the carpet here we also have some black brush algae on the hardscape and i recently started noticing some cladophora algae so you can see a small dot over there in the middle of the screen and we have a little bit over here in the uh, carpet with the liliopsis so that's quite surprising that's not really an algae that i usually struggle with but um yeah i'm sure we can get rid of, get rid of that as well and lastly not to forget our 20 liter shrimp tank this is a low-tech tank, so it's going to take a little bit more than two weeks to really see a big difference here. Especially after the replanting session. I mean, plants just need a little bit more time. Uh, I do have to say that I'm really not enjoying this tank currently. I just don't like how it looks. Especially if you look at it from a distance. I mean, on the shelf, the two tanks on the bottom looking very good. This one is looking quite good. That one is looking good. This one is just a bit... Nah, not really. So I'm considering to maybe rescape this one try something new you guys let me know in the comments what should i do should i keep it for longer or should we rescape it but yeah guys i think that's it i think all the things are looking pretty good right now no longer feel like i'm behind on maintenance so i think that's the end of this video hope you guys enjoyed this one don't forget to smash the like button it really helps me out 
and I'll see you guys next time. Take care.